Hi, divers. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba, back again with, uh, I think, anyway, an interesting uh, bit of uh, scuba diving history. A little while ago, I had done one of my uh, Vintage Scuba videos on weird regulators. Maybe remember that weird single hose regulators. I got lots of two hose regulators, but single hose regulators are pretty weird too. And I showed you uh, half a dozen or so that were pretty interesting. Sonic regulators that buzz when you get low on air and regulators with no second stage, the whole mask. Anyway, weird stuff. Take a look back and see if you can find it. And at that time, I said to you that I have some other interesting, strange, if you like, single hose regulators, and I would share them with you sometime. This is one of those times. I have picked one regulator that is one regulator company and model uh, th that I have always found really interesting, and I want to share that with you. There was in uh, north central Ohio, not too far from Cleveland, a little town called Aurora, Ohio. Maybe some of you folks are, know that area or from that area. Aurora, uh, Aurora, Ohio. There was a company there called Aviation, Rose Aviation. Around the country in those days, in the 60s and the 70s, there were many different companies that were all small manufacturing companies that contributed to the aviation industry, which at that time was really booming, you know. We're talking about the time of the uh, NASA and walking on the moon and the airplanes and fighters and so on. There were many, many manufacturing companies that were booming at that time, and uh, a lot of them did really, really well. Um, a lot of them did not do so well. Uh, but anyway, regardless, uh, some of them in their attempt to, to increase the bottom line, be more profitable, uh, they would try to make other things as well that they could make easily while fr from their manufacturing processes they already had in place. And Rose Aviation is one of those companies. Now, it's gone now. A uh, long time ago, actually, it's got nothing to do with the Chinese or any of that kind of, you know, global globalization. It's nothing to do with that. I got to tell you something that long before globalization started, companies opened and closed and workers worked and got laid off. Sorry about that. But uh, anyway, but the company closed after a number of few number of years. It rose aviation. Now, what they decided to do was make scuba regulators. Yeah, because you see, at the same time as, as the aircraft corporation, the aircraft industry was growing and it was exciting and we were heading for the moon and fighter jets and all that neat stuff. So Rose Aviation uh, in Aurora, Ohio, uh, decided they were going to try to make some scuba regulators. Uh, the, the sport was growing, C-100 started, uh, and, uh, and a lot of talk about scuba diving, so they decided to do that. And they, so they made a regulator, a scuba regulator. They called it the Rose Regulator. It makes sense. Rose Aviation made the Rose Regulator. And it was a pretty neat little regulator. Very, very unique. And they made that same regulator, a regular like that, for a couple of years. And they made another model. And they made another model. They ended up with what they call the Rose Pro Regulator. Now, this all occurred over just about a four or five year span. They actually had a, a catalog. Very attractive catalog. I have a copy of it that, that shows their different regulators over that four or five uh, year span. And it was pretty neat. They were really interesting regulators as well. They're gone. And the regulators are gone as well. The regulators were very unique. They were also, the way they were built, they did not last a long time. They used a lot of plastics. Aviation company, right? A lot of plastics. The other companies were still using brass and steel. And, uh, and, and the design of their regulator was a very lightweight design. The, 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 the materials and the the components, the assemblies were made to be very, very light. Aviation company, makes sense? So the bottom line is that uh, today, 50 years later, there are not very many Rose regulators still in existence. I have about six or seven of them. I want to show you a couple of them, and you'll see what's neat about them and, and uh, why I think they're really special. Okay, here we go. I'm going to hold them up here, Kevin. You just stay still there for a minute. So this is a pretty typical Rose regulator. This first stage was actually the first stage from one of their aircraft assemblies. It's a very, very common first stage. While this one is attached to a scuba regulator, this very same first stage could have been used in a number of different assemblies for aircraft, uh, the spaceships, commercial aircraft, fighters, and so on, because a lot of regulators were used for a variety of things, compressed air, oxygen feeds, all types of things. So all they had to do was take one of their very good regulators, attach a scuba type yoke to it. I don't know if you can see, if you get very close to this, if you can see very well, but, but uh, this yoke is a very, very simple, a very, very rough casting. Can you see that, Kevin? There? A very rough casting. 
you know, so they, they didn't spend a whole lot of money on this device. Their regulator, this first stage, is good quality, but this yoke that they made to make it into a skipper regulator was done pretty crudely. And uh, the adjustment on the back end of it, which was uh, unusual at the time, and so on. And then they used a, a piece of hose. Now, this again was unusual because most of the scuba companies by that time had standardized their hoses. Uh, Rose Aviation, of course, had lots of hoses around. They may have had their own uh, hose uh, producer and their own uh, device uh, 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 tools for putting on fittings. So th this is very, very different from most of the other scuba regulators, this fitting. This is a, a, a tapped fitting, a, 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 um, an MPT type fitting, which goes in with tape or sealant rather than O-rings. And there's no swivel on this and so on. And the hose itself is very, very strong, light, uh, very light, lightly built, but strong as well. It reminds everything about it, reminds you of aviation. Now look at the second stage, because this is really the part they had to build from scratch. There's nothing in aviation that is similar to a second stage for a uh, scuba regulator. So this is the second stage. And there are several things about that are unique. First of all, you can see that the second stage <clears throat> fits into your mouth sideways, like this, you see? The exhaust is on this end. So you suck in and you blow out, the bubbles come out the end right away. That's a little bit unusual. Secondly, you can see that on the front of the regulator, there's a red uh, uh, elongated piece with holes in it. That's a diaphragm in behind that. So that's a diaphragm that moves in and out when you suck on it. It moves in, opens the valves, lets air through, then you exhale, it moves back and the bubbles come out. And then really, really interesting, take a look at the mouthpiece. This mouthpiece is wide, very, very wide, you see. And it has these two really interesting straps that actually wrap around the body of the regulator. What's with that? <laughs> well, it's kind of interesting. You notice there's no screws, there's no clamps, there's no clips on this regulator on the second stage at all. It's because this mouthpiece holds it together. That's right. They designed a mouthpiece for their regulator with these straps. And they assembled the mouthpiece and when you assembled the second stage. And when you put the mouthpiece on, these two mouthpiece straps wrapped around the front, they held that clip in place, held the diaphragm in place, held the whole thing together. So the second stage was really unique. And unfortunately, for a variety of reasons, uh, that, that, that's why there are very few of these around in good working condition. This particular one does work almost perfectly. But usually the thin, thin rubber diaphragm deteriorated. You can't get them anymore, and they're almost impossible to make, to reproduce. Also, these mouthpieces are old, and, and the material get dried up. So as people have taken them off and put them back on, they've all broken. So to get a mouthpiece that actually still has intact straps, very, very tough to do, very, very unlikely. And the plastic body itself, even this one has a few cracks I can see on it already, but the plastic body itself was subject to deterioration pretty quickly. Consequently, while the first stage was well made, pretty well made, the second stage was very, very subject to deterioration, cracking and breaking. But that is, folks, a Rose Pro Regulator from Rose Aviation in Aurora, Ohio. Pretty neat, huh? Now, they made several different versions. Uh, There's a couple of different versions anyway. This is a, almost identical, same type, but here you can see how the mouthpiece has got twisted and it's worn and so on. On this particular one, I noticed, and I don't know, I don't know everything about these. It's difficult to get information, but on this particular one, and I've seen this on more than a few, there's a metal clip. You see it on there? There's a metal clip that hooks on and it holds those two bands from the mouthpiece holds them together so they don't slip off the ends. If these bands slipped off the end, then that red diaphragm cover would pop out and the, uh, and the, the diaphragm would fall apart and it wouldn't work underwater. So it seems later they put that metal clip on there. I see it on the later ones. So that's a little bit different as well. Here's another one, almost exactly the same. This one is a, even cruder. The first stage is not finished at all and it has a fitting here to go onto an oxygen tank or an oxygen bottle. Second stage is almost exactly the same. But this second stage is missing most of the parts. The mouthpiece uh, is missing the straps. You can see that's completely broken off. And the second stage itself, uh, the, the body itself, it will come off. It's in not bad shape. I could clean it up. Well, I'm going to take this one off and show you something else that was unique. This was a tilt valve. Now, if you've taken any kind of technical training, about scuba regulars, and if you haven't, and you're interested in this technical stuff, you should do that. There's lots of, most dive stores will offer a, a simple 
uh, one or two evening <clears throat> equipment specialist program where you'll learn this type of stuff. This is a tilt valve, and you can see it's a very simple valve. The pressure comes from the first stage, and it's stopped right here by a rubber stopper. And then when you draw in from the mouthpiece, there's a diaphragm, and the diaphragm pushes on this lever. And it pushes the lever down, and that moves the rubber stopper, and air comes through. I mean, it couldn't be any simpler. It's a tilt valve, just that simple. It just tilts. There's no levers. There's no bearings. There's no hooks or anything else. So it looks very simple, and it is very simple, and that's one of the beauties of it. It was simple. Uh, didn't break. How can you break one part? And, uh, and cheap to make as well. It did have one problem. And that was that if something went wrong with the first stage, then the pressure might build up in the hose. If the pressure built up in the hose, it would put more pressure on that rubber seat and it would jam that valve closed so that if you pushed on this, it, air wouldn't come out. In other words, if the first stage leaked, the second stage jammed shut. Now, you're all scuba divers. Just think about it. That's not good, is it? They don't make these anymore. Regulators today are what they call fail-safe or downstream valves. So if something goes wrong in the first stage, doesn't happen very often, but if it did happen, something went wrong in the first stage, then the pressure increases and the air would flow into your mouth. You could still breathe. It might get a bit too much air, but too much air is better than none, right? So this particular design, while it had some advantages, it had one big disadvantage and has disappeared as well. So there's a couple more. They also made the same regulator, but in black. I don't think there was much difference. I don't, in fact, I know there was no difference at all in its actual structure. Mouthpiece, unique. In fact, the mouthpiece had Aurora Pro, Aurora Rose written right on it. So that this was their mouthpiece. This one has a clip on it as well. And here's one more to show you. Now, this one's kind of neat as well. I want to show you this one. This is pretty neat because you notice that none of these regulars have a purge valve. Now, your regulars that you stay on the purge, purge valve, the purge button. You push on the front and it blows air into the regulator and helps to clear it and so on. <clears throat> regulars in the old days didn't have a purge button. My first reg did not have a purge button. And I did, uh, or a lot of my friends did as well, the same as this chap has done. What he's done here is he's taken a nut and a bolt and a spring and he's actually put it through one of the holes in that front cover. And so now you can push on this, which pushes on the diaphragm, and it purges the regulator. So remember I talked about do-it-yourself? This is do-it-yourself. The guy said, gosh, I want a purge valve. I know how to do that. I'll just get a nut and a bolt and a little spring. ba 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 do. There you go. This may be the only Aurora Rose regulator in the world with a purge valve on it, purge button on it. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe other guys did it too. And there's that clip I told you about. That clip's in very, very good shape. This uh, mouthpiece is in pretty good shape as well. Now, later, as, 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 a, as a couple of years went by, they developed a new second stage. Maybe they decided their, their first second stage wasn't perfect. The first stage was cleaned up a little bit. So the first stage on this late model was improved. You might notice that even the hose fittings are a little neater and cleaner, a little bit of chrome plating on there, some plating anyway. So it looks a little nicer. They were getting into marketing, I suppose. And a little later, they came out, and they changed the second stage a little bit. You probably don't notice the changes uh, in this video, but I can see them here. You might notice that the mouthpiece in this second stage is offset. The mouth, you know, it's a little different than the mouthpiece in this second stage. Can you see the slight difference there? They're both the same length and the diaphragms. You see the mouthpiece is in a different position. They did that to make it breathe a little bit easier, but essentially it's the same device. Chrome plating on the plastic, by the way, which is really leading edge in those days. It didn't have much chrome plating, certainly not on plastic. It was a new technology. So there you go. Just some really, really interesting, definitely vintage, if not almost antique regulators. Row from Rose Aviation, Aurora, Ohio, and uh, we have the Rose Regulator and the Rose Pro. That last one was called the Rose Pro. Very, very unique. Quite rare. In fact, if you go into your local dive store or even speak to guys who have been around for a while and say, have you ever heard of a Rose regulator? Chances are they haven't. And now you have. So I hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of information about one of the old regulators, part of our scuba history. And I, all I really want to do is keep some of that history alive. If you live in Aurora, Ohio, gosh, do a little bit of research. You might find out where that plant was. I don't know what's there now. I don't, I'm pretty sure they're gone. But there might be something there. A little bit of fun anyway. Hope you've enjoyed that, guys and uh, girls. And I will talk to you again real soon. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba.